Hello, my name is Nikki Woodhatch. Um, I am 44 and I live in Surrey. Um, and I really felt I had to put my voice to this cause um, from the beginning of this, right from the beginning, February, March time, I could feel and I could see the fear and the hysteria growing. Um, and it didn't make any sense from the beginning. It was really clear from all of the numbers coming out of Wuhan, um, even from Italy, that this was a deadly disease for a very small minority of people. Um, but I was flooded with an influx of people on my Facebook that uh, even small percentage of numbers in a big population is huge. And we had to protect the NHS. And I kind of got that. I understood that. Um, we locked down to protect the NHS. We locked down to flatten the curve. Uh, but it became apparent pretty quickly that the NHS was coping, that the, um, uh, the hospitals were coping, there were obviously some hotspots, the Nightingale was built, only saw a handful of people, and I just kept thinking, this is like some weird social experiment, we've never done this before. Um, there were two images that really struck out, and I still believe the reason we're in this mess is these two images. One was of a man flattened by steamroller, dies of coronavirus. Um, and the other one is the amount of media attention that coronavirus had, and these were both published in March, I think. Um, and the media attention from coronavirus is in the millions or billions, I think, and SARS, um, bird flu, HIV, all of the other viruses, minimal attention compared to it. And I think they're the two reasons. Our media has created this fear storm, um, and our numbers have been hugely uh, inflated and it's proof Public Health England um, have ordered an urgent review six weeks ago, whatever it was, it still hasn't happened, that's how urgent it is, um, that we are inflating the numbers massively. People are dying of, uh, of whatever and because they've tested previously positive to coronavirus in the past they're being put down as a Covid death, it's just wrong. Um, so for me it didn't make any sense from the beginning, I've got three children, uh, a 15 year old who is going into GCSE this year, she's had five or six hours of face to face schooling since March, my seven year old has had two weeks of schooling, face to face schooling since March, and my 12 year old has had no face to face schooling since March. This isn't about the education, my kids are really lucky they go to a really, really good school. This is about the social interaction. Uh, my 12 year old put it brilliantly. It's by doing the online learning, they're getting all the boring stuff of education from their point of view, without any of the fun, without the break times, without the lunch times, without the uh, chatting to their friends. That's what's important. That's what they've missed. And I'm so angry that they've missed it. I'm so angry. Um, from a personal point of view, I've lost my business. I had a business that I built up over 12 years. Um, it was in uh, the education um, and mum and baby sector. We taught um, baby and antenatal classes. Um, I couldn't see how this world, the way it was going, was going to continue to be able to teach classes in a in a way that we had before. Um, we, uh, we we thrived on bringing in self-employed teachers. I couldn't see how anybody would leave a job that they would potentially get furloughed for for being self-employed. And I just couldn't see a way out of it. So we had to put the business into liquidation in July. Um, uh, the The... the I haven't seen from another person probably, I haven't seen my dad since uh, March any further than three or four metres. We get any closer than three or four metres, he backs away. Um, he's got COPD, he's 75, I absolutely understand. He's been living at, stuck at home, listening to the nonsense um, churned up by the media and I totally understand why he's frightened. Um, but from my point of view, th that's my kids haven't seen their granddad for that long. Um, the, the fear that's being created is, is just wrong. It's fundamentally wrong. Um, the numbers are being skewed. The uh, I've had to deactivate my Facebook account because I just couldn't deal with the amount of people on my Facebook that were so anti-Boris um, and that were saying when Boris got in that that's it, the NHS is screwed. Um, and look where we are. Um, and nobody is, and everybody is, is still is now worshipping Boris. Um, there is so much science out there that tells us that this virus, uh, that we've reached or we're very close to herd immunity, that, that, that many of us have T-cell immunity and antibody immunity to this virus. But because Boris isn't listening to it, that makes it wrong. And that's nonsense. In my opinion, that actually makes it right. Because 
totally don't trust anything that comes out of or comes anywhere near from Boris and Matt Hancock and Chris Whitty. The lies that they've peddled is actually criminal. I, I can't believe we haven't taken to the streets earlier. I'm so angry. I can't tell you how angry I am. Um, I've been labelled as selfish because I clearly haven't had somebody that's died of coronavirus. Um, I know someone that's had it, a GP friend has had it. She said it was horrendous, it was awful. Um, she knows a 44-year-old who died from it, supposedly healthy with no other conditions. I don't know the story to it. Of course people are going to die from it. Of course this is an awful disease. That doesn't mean that we have to lock up the entire world, that we have to damage our children's future. It's wrong. What we should have done from the start, and I followed Sweden from the start, is do what they did, protect the vulnerable. We didn't protect our vulnerable. Check out the whistleblowers in the care homes, what we've done to our vulnerable. It's, it's a disgrace, I'm so angry. Uh, we should have protected our children from the, um, the care homes from the start. We should have shielded the vulnerable and the rest of us should have gone on with it. Our children should have been at school. We would then be in a situation where this virus has passed through the majority of us. It probably has anyway. Look at London, the, the cases in London decreased massively just after lockdown because they all had it in lockdown. It, they're all so close to each other. So we should have gone down the route of Sweden. Sweden said from the beginning, it's not them conducting a social experiment on their people, it's us. And we have failed. And until we admit we failed, we're never gonna move forward. Um, if they bring in a sniff of mandatory masks in school, my children are out of that system quicker than you can say mandatory masks. I'm not sending my children to school in a mask. Um, uh, I, I think that the way we are social beings, we are social creatures. Um, the first time I hugged my best friend out of this, which was not long after we moved out of lockdown, I'm not a very tactile person, but it was the most phenomenal feeling. It's not normal to, to not be social, to not touch people. So please go and hug your friend. Don't go near someone if they're vulnerable and you're worried about them, of course. I've hugged my mum, I've hugged my in-laws, my in-laws, my father-in-law's in his 80s, um, healthier than any other 80-year-old I know. Um, and I've hugged my friends. It's so important. My kids have hugged their friends. My kids don't do social distancing and they shouldn't have to. And I fundamentally disagree with it in schools. And if they try and bring in masks, um, then we will be out of the system. Please people, please do some research, see what's out there, check out uh, Professor Gupta, um, check out uh, all of the other scientists, check out Sweden's data, check out uh, the stuff out there, read and listen to what Anna is saying. There is so much stuff out there and it's important that we start to listen to the alternative and push back on this.